I guess where I would start is the mere fact that the the male fluid from the human body is not alive. Mm -hmm. It's just a fluid. It's not alive. It's only at the time of uh, sexual reproduction. It's only at the time of sex um, that this uh, euphoric feeling of the body comes over. It's because that uh, that feeling in sex is uh, is caused by an electrical discharge in the body, mm -hmm. which then um, <clears throat> uh, gives life to the fluid. Mm -hmm. The fluid has no life before that. But as the, as the fluid passes through the penis, it is uh, excited by an electrical force which gives life to the fluid. And at that moment, the fluid becomes a life, uh, uh, an actual living thing. Mm -hmm. And so this is why the ancient peoples always associated uh, sex and the euphoric feeling of sex uh, with creation, because in point of fact, that's what happens. Uh, that actual um, ecstasy feeling mm -hmm. is an electrical charge, mm -hmm. which is uh, charging uh, the fluid in the male body and causing it to become alive. Mm -hmm. So that now it's alive and can now uh, connect to the female and create a human life. So that whole subject of sex and reproduction and how it affects our psyche and our minds and ultimately our lives on the earth is a profound subject. It's, it's, it's awesome in scope because the bottom line is that we are you know, I don't know, 80 to 90 percent water. Mm -hmm. Our body is, is, is made up mostly of water, and yeah. water is a good conductor of electricity. Mm -hmm. And the electricity, because our body is a biological battery, there's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. We Our heart beats at an at electrical frequency. Uh, we stay alive because of electricity. It's called bioelectrical system because we're a biological system, but we're electric, you know, but we are electrified. Yeah. That's why some uh, fish, like eels, they're just a fish, but they can carry electricity in them. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we do, like an eel, like any other animal that uh, has an electrical discharge. We are a biological creation, but we carry within us in the electrical force field. And that electrical force field, along with the 90% uh, water our body is consisting of, uh, we are able to reproduce uh, other life forms. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole extraordinary story is just a, a brilliant stuff, you know, when you begin to understand how all of this works. Yeah. But <clears throat> then from there, the ancient peoples, the very most ancient peoples of the world, realized that this uh, that this euphoric sexual uh, release um, was God, or was the point at which the divine in the universe uh, co-created with the human creature and created life. Mm -hmm. And so, um, therefore, sex became a very powerful symbol in both religion and uh, and in government. Yeah. And kings were always, uh, you know, kings always wore crowns that uh, many of them, their crowns were in the, si were in the shape of a male phallic. Mm -hmm. uh, many of the gods wore male phallic, a penis headdress. Uh, so... And of course, in religion, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, Christian, uh, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, the, uh, the symbols of sex are replete everywhere. It's, it's, it's all over the place. Yeah. Um, but people don't realize how much is actually in uh, those three religions. They're called the people of the book. People don't realize how much is actually in uh, those three religions, they're called the people of the book because Islam, Judaism, and Christianity rely on scripture. They rely on their book. So all three religions are, are collectively called the people of the book. Mm -hmm. Well, in the books of all three books uh, of the different religions, of different faiths, 
are filled with sexual uh, symbolism, emblems, catchphrases, as you know, and a classic example is uh, <coughs> uh, Judaism uh, has uh, King Solomon, uh, Solomon's Temple. Mm-hmm. Well, the the actual Temple of Solomon is a <coughs> well. When we get into these subjects of spirituality connecting to sexuality and how it, how it causes us to think and act, uh, when when misunderstood. Uh, it can be disastrous, which we are looking at the earth today with the raping and crime and out of control sexual uh, desires mm-hmm. uh, is all part of a misunderstanding of what the sex is all about and what the what the whole concept of sexual reproduction is all about. Mm-hmm. Today, of course, you know, too many people live in a materialistic world, so they don't really research or study very much of anything. Uh, they just get it off of television, off of their news. But if you really study this subject, you begin to see how uh, sex has been used to manipulate the human race. Mm-hmm. And, of course, in, in America, everybody knows sex is used to sell. It's, it's a business. Yeah. But, uh, when, you know, it's such a big subject to get into, but um, especially Solomon's Temple I brought up. Yeah. Uh, the Temple of Solomon was actually designed, the design of Solomon's Temple, according to Jewish reference works in the Encyclopedia Judica. I mean, this is what the Jews in the reference work tell me. Yeah. It's not me making this up, but it's called, Solomon's Temple was a phallic temple. It was designed off of the male phallic and had the long uh, corridor, which was the, the staff of the male phallic, and then it had the, 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 the head of the penis, which was called the most holy, and outside of the Temple of Solomon were two uh, large uh, pillars, and they were called in the Bible Jachin and Boaz. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jachin and Boaz were the two pillars which represented sex uh, going into the temple. We have that term today used around Jachin, and Jachin is a is a Bible term, and Jachin and Boaz. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the whole symbolism of Solomon's temple was sexual in nature. The entire thing was based on sex. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and, and it's also interesting, too, that Solomon is S-O-L-O-M-O-N, <clears throat> which is the name of the sun in the three esoteric languages. The esoteric ancient languages was Sol, S-O-L, which is Latin mm-hmm. for the sun, mm-hmm. and Om, which is Om, which is Hindu, for the creative principle in the universe, always pictured as the sun. Mm-hmm. And On was the city of the sun, uh, the Greeks call it Heliopolis, but Heliopolis is uh, actually a Greek name. The original name in Egypt for the city of the sun was O-N, on. That's why you can flip a light switch on, uh-huh. because it was a city of light. It was the city of the sun. So Sol, Om, On, or King Solomon, was the sun, mm-hmm. and the sun gives energy to the earth. This is why Christianity refers to Jesus as God's Son. He's the light of the world. Well, of course, the Son is the light of the world. Mm-hmm. And so King Solomon, or the, the Temple of the Sun, and the Sun, as I said, gives us energy, and energy feeds the human body, which we release that energy in the form of sex, creates human life. Uh, and creates life in all animals. So the sun was very connected, uh, very tightly connected to sex worship. So okay. anytime you see uh, the sun worship, you always is always followed by something to do with sex. The very word pharaoh wow. uh, comes from the or the word phala, which is connected to the word pala. Uh-huh. This is why you have something called Palestine. Uh-huh. Palestine um, is connected to the word phala or pharaoh. Um, inter- incidentally, even the word Palestine. Palestine is a very interesting word. Stein means a rock, 
or stone as a stein, <coughs> and pala as male phallic, uh -huh. the male penis. Uh -huh. Palestine is a male phallic, hard as a rock. Palestine. Wow. And so when you break down words and terms in religion and government, you begin to see that the entire superstructure of human civilization is based on sex. Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, <clears throat> even the number six in the, in the Christian Bible, the number six is the number of a man. It's called 666 is the number of the, the Antichrist, so to speak. But the scripture talks about the number six is the number of a man. Well, six, S-I-X, in English is spelled in Latin, S-E-X, uh -huh. sex. Uh -huh. And sex is the number of a man, or six is the number of a man. It has to do with the, uh, with the, um, Numeral new numbers of uh, reproduction and system in the human body, mm -hmm. the chromosomes, etc. So, um, you know, so basically, what I'm saying is that when you understand, as as uh, Wilhelm Reich did, yeah, that sex is not only a pleasurable thing for man and woman, but it is also a a for lack of a better term, a profoundly spiritual experience because for the first time human creatures can reproduce life. Uh -huh. And that life comes from the sun mm -hmm. because the sun is the source of all of our energy. So without the sun, there would be no life on the earth, grass or animals or anything else. But because the sun is energy, the energy goes into the plants and animals and us and we are therefore uh, able to live from day to day, and our body is, uh, as I said, over 90% water. Mm -hmm. We are able to um, reproduce life, all animals can, mm -hmm. because there's a very big and most important connection between sun worship, ancient religions, and sex. Uh, it's an extraordinary story, as I said. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, uh, when you... Take all of this, which is very difficult to handle for most people because it's a subject that we don't talk about in polite company. But um, the, the the Temple of Solomon is just one example. And another example is in Egypt. You have the Egyptian obelisk. Obelisks were called the ben bens, mm -hmm. or the the uh, pyramid at the top of an obelisk was called a ben ben stone. Um, the the Egyptian obelisk. In Washington, D.C., we have something called the Washington Monument. Well, Egyptian obelisks were always representing the male phallic, the male erection. And that's why in Washington, D.C., you have the large uh, Washington Monument, which is a representation of the male erection, <clears throat> and it connects directly to the oval office or the female ovaries. Mm -hmm. So the Oval Office is actually a sexual symbol of feminine uh, power. Mm -hmm. Oval Office is ovaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, the water in between the Oval Office or the ovaries in the sexual symbol of Washington Monument is called the waters of chaos. I mean, because that's what we came out of. Yeah. We came out of your mother's water. Uh -huh. So water, sex, electricity the divine presence in the universe that comes through man at the time of sex, all of this is extraordinarily powerful knowledge. Yeah. And it is very highly connected to uh, religion on the earth. Yeah. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are replete, as I said, with all kinds of sexual symbols, temples, I mean church steeples. When you drive by any church and you see the tall steeples, Mm -hmm. Look it up in a dictionary. A steeple is a phallic symbol. It's a symbol of the male erect. <clears throat> you know, uh, Again, uh, this whole subject of sex and how it impacts our human life, our religious life, our political life, it's extraordinary. So, you know, uh, what I'd like to go into more details about, uh, um, I understand now how... Um, uh, neurosis, warfare, and violence, whatever, 
uh, even the need for material things, you know, how economy is operating now, uh, how uh, the silliest kind of products, uh, for example, in cosmetics and perfumes and uh, stuff sold for uh, very expensive amounts, amount, and uh, people's emotions animating in, strange, in, ve in very strange ways. And uh, I understand how this is uh, basically, uh, just to, uh, to, be, to, to be brief, is related to the repression that was created in humanity. Uh, yeah. Not necessarily um, in the subject of sex, but sex being one of the most significant ways to experience the divine or to exp experience that nirva nirvanic uh, euphoric feelings. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, how are these uh, political, how are these religious symbols? I do believe that uh, religions, the way that they are taught today, the way they are uh, represented today, have nothing to do with the origin or way, uh, where they came from, or what oh, the masters try to communicate. But how uh, the tricks are operating, how is this symbolism uh, instilling more and more repression in people? How is that working? Well... <coughs> It's because we're being bombarded by it in everyday life. Uh, obviously, sex is, a, is on the mind of, of um, all men. I can speak for a man. <clears throat> so sex is always there, dominant in the male uh, and the female, but especially the male. So this is why uh, <clears throat> uh, the symbols of power in Washington, D.C., as well as in England, around the world, the symbols of federal power, of kingly power, is always uh, connected to uh, phallic worship and sex worship. As a matter of fact, in England, one of the most important symbols, uh, religious symbols that is used by the kings uh, as a symbol of their kingly power <laughs> is called the Laofel Stone. And if you go on my, on my website, you will see that the Laofel stone is a is a symbol of the of the male phallic. Mm -hmm. So one of the most important religious symbols in England, representing the divine right of kings, is a male phallic. It's a it's a huge stone uh, carved exactly like the male penis. So, <clears throat> and as I said, all over the world, symbols of of, of governments of churches, of uh, educational institutions, mm -hmm. religious institutions, uh, are used the symbol of the phallic. I mean, this is why even in the Christian tradition, uh, if you're going to be a minister or a Christian minister, you have to go to a seminary, mm -hmm. because it comes from the word semen, seminary. And so the whole idea of religion is the worship of sex and the sun, and the reproduction of life. So we say only God could create life. Well, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Male comes together with female and creates life. And how? Through the sexual intercourse. And uh, <clears throat> So anyway, we could get into specific uh, symbols in the different religions, but generally speaking, all three religions uh, have incorporated, I would say the majority of all three religions have incorporated Mm -hmm. um, sex has the primary symbolism, and the reason why is because sex is where God uses to create life. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're all interested in as life and how we live. But unfortunately, there is a dark force in the world, and all the ancient peoples real, realize that. I've always known it, and lots of people are waking up to find out today Mm -hmm. But our world is actually not in the hands of some uh, benevolent, loving God. No, in point of fact, that's not true at all. Our world is in the hands of very, very evil, uh, powerful, evil, dark forces, mm -hmm. which uh, have in mind destroying the human family. And the best way to destroy human family is to use what's already there. Uh, the dark side, the evil side of this world is not dreaming up something new and different because something totally new and different to harm the human race would uh, would be so foreign to our nature that we probably wouldn't use it. 
So the dark side uses something which uh, all humans are connected to, whether they like it or not, and that's sex. Mm -hmm. And so the dark side, the evil that runs our world, and believe me, there's nothing in this world of any uh, redeemable value when it comes to religion or government. Religions and government are very, very evil. Because they are controlling the human race. They're controlling our lives and what we will think and what we will do and how we will view a thing. And so uh, I consider the entire human structure on the earth is extremely evil and dark because it uses your passions, it uses your natural passions in life to manipulate you and to exploit you mm -hmm. in, in commerce, in religion. They have people bowing down uh, in churches in their religion, bowing down to the sun. You, you face the sun, you bow down every day, every few hours, and worshiping uh, gods and ancient gods, which are actually sexual symbols. Uh, so, yeah, I would say in conclusion to this whole subject, that unless one understands the words, the terms, the symbols, the catchphrases, and especially the uh, the picture symbols and where these words have come from, you're never going to believe how well you have been propagandized into buying into a sexually dark and evil system mm -hmm. that uh, controls our world today. And we see that everywhere. We see it. And, of course, the higher up in religion you go, the worse it gets. This is why you have the Vatican with all of its um, uh, problems with sex going on among the priests. Well, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that it's ludicrous and silly to be concerned about that. I think it's, a, a, I think it's foolish to be so concerned about the Vatican and the sexual problems of the priest in the Vatican and the... Uh, and, uh, and you know those those things which are going on, when that's the, that was the basis of the church to start with. If you go all the way back to the beginning of religion, that's what religion was all about: sex, uh, the reproduction, mm -hmm. um, the resurrection, or the erection, or the resurrection mm -hmm. of life on the earth. And uh, so it doesn't shock me at all. I thought it was merely a part of the, the natural flow of things when the church is finally beginning to be found out and, and exposed for all the sexual stuff that's going on. I thought, I, I'm not surprised. That's what this whole idea of priesthood, when you find priests are walking around in robes. A robe is a female dress. Men wear, men don't wear dresses, but uh, priests in churches wear long robes, which represents the feminine principle of creation. Mm -hmm. And so you have men wearing dresses. You have men who are told that uh, that they cannot have any sexual contact with uh, with the female uh, if they're going to be a priest, <clears throat> which we know as well as anybody, you know, any adult knows they they are having sex with something all the time. Mm -hmm. And so this whole system of religion, government, education. Like I said, if you're going to be a, a Christian ministry, you've got to go to a seminary. Uh, this whole subject is just extraordinarily powerful, dark stuff that we don't normally talk about in uh, polite company. But I think it's about time we, we look at uh, what's, how we are being manipulated to vote for and to agree to religious belief systems that we have no idea in the world where they came from. None. Um, if you can talk uh, in more details about uh, the relationship between uh, uh, repression and violence or madness in humanity. And uh, stressing the point, uh, for example, even in societies where sexual freedom is given, uh, they seem to be even uh, thinking more and more in madness. It, it's, it, it, isn't, it doesn't seem to be resolving the issue, or the, uh, you understand? Yes. Yeah, so how well, is it resolved? In the ancient Roman Empire, there was a symbol for uh, slaves who were freed. Um, the symbol was a red stocking cap. Mm -hmm. and you will see it portrayed in many, many paintings and uh, 
skull rings and <clears throat> books by the thousands about the ancient Roman Empire. So when you were a slave and you were freed, uh, one of the symbols of a freed slave was a stocking cap painted red. It was a red cap. And it was called a Phrygian cap, P-H-Y-G, Phrygian cap. Mm-hmm. And a Phrygian cap was, uh, was like I said, it was a, uh, a, a kind of like a stocking cap, and it was always red, and it symbolized freedom. Well, the Phrygian cap was was always pictured two different ways. It was uh, if it was pictured socially, uh, it was always pictured on a slave or some someone wearing the cap, and the cap was flopped down like a beret. It was flopped down on the side, and that was a symbol of a freed slave. But when it was used, the Phrygian cap was used by government. The Phrygian cap was a sexual symbol of the male phallic. And so when the Phrygian cap was used in government, it was always used uh, on, a, on a staff. It was always used either on a spear or a sword or a staff. And the, the spear or the sword was pointed upright, and the Phrygian cap, the stocking cap, was dropped onto the, onto the sword or spear. And so it symbolized... The male, uh, the cap symbolized the male phallic or the head of the penis and therefore if it was on a sword or a spear uh, or a rod, it symbolized it was in erection. It was, uh, it was, it was in male erection. But when the war was over, implying that war is a man's game, a manly sexual game, <clears throat> when the war is over, uh, then the cap is, is, is taken off of the staff and it is now reclined. So after sex, the male phallic reclines. And so go back and do some uh, research on the Phrygian cap of revolution. Mm-hmm. P-H-Y-G-I-A-N, Phrygian cap. And you will see a Phrygian cap was, as I said, the male, uh, the head of the male penis are represented the male phallic, and the governments always use the Phrygian cap on a spear or a sword to imp- to imply that it was men, manly thing. It was that man thing about sex and domination, and so that's all uh, you know. Wars have ever been. It's just domination, and this is why in America we love this kind of stuff. In America, we love fighting. Cage fighting, gladiator sports, killing children. We love that stuff in America. We're, we're really big on fighting and bloodshed and violence, uh, because it's that male thing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so, uh, unfortunately, our country leads the world in this kind of dark, uh, disastrous kind of thinking. But Americans are big on that. We, you know, you, we spend hundreds of millions of dollars a year <clears throat> going to events to watch people beat each other up, <clears throat> and they always at these uh, at these uh, wrestling matches where the uh, the gladiators show off their <clears throat> their bodies. They always have in the ring before the fights women, scantily clad women, because sex and violence always goes together, mm-hmm. and uh, and so that's why so many men are very violent in their lives because they've fed themselves on sex and drugs and violence. And America <clears throat> has influenced the whole world. So now the whole world is into sex and violence and rape and plunder. We call it business. It's just the business of the Roman Empire. Rome is destroying civilization and it's using, uh, <clears throat> it's using sex as a primary tool Mm-hmm. to incite violence, revolution, because there is nothing spiritual out there for the human race. Exactly. Spirituality has been taken away from the human race. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing of any re- intrinsic or redeemable value in the world, period. Yeah. There's nothing out there on the earth of any redeemable value anywhere. The only thing of any value is within you, within yourself, <clears throat> and... Uh, but the governments have used sex in religion, as I said, 
and symbolism and violence always goes with that because no matter how much you try and have free freedom of sexual, there's always going to be the majority of the people are going to see that there's a huge number of people who will misuse any kind of freedom. And so in America, we, we, are, we have sexual freedom. <clears throat> but uh, we also lead the world in violence and chaos and drug addiction and uh, murder and every kind of filthy, degenerate thing that you can come up with. America's on top. We do it better than anyone else. And so I'm afraid that, um, you know, there's a, there was a great quote by uh, Julian Huxley. It's on my website. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to go on my website, jordanmaxwell.com, mm-hmm. and then go to research. There's a button at the top of the page that says research. Mm-hmm. And then go to the research page, and it'll be a bunch of boxes. Each one's a different color. And each one's filled with all kinds of research. Well, one of those boxes on the research page is called Quotes of Interest. And scroll down, look at some of the most incredible quotes that people have have done. But there's one quote by Julian Huxley discussing this very subject. Mm -hmm. And he talks about how the powerful people of the world who run the planet and the handful of people at the very top who run the earth uh, will use sex and entertainment and drugs to entertain the human mind. It's a very important quote. So as I said, go on my website to research and go to the uh, quotes of interest and and read some of those quotes, and especially the one by uh, Julian Huxley, because it's extremely eye-opening when he the way he's explained it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Julian Huxley from England. Uh-huh. And he talked about how they develop sexual and violence and entertainment, movies, television, uh, to keep the human mind occupied and, and, uh, and keep it uh, agitated, always looking for a bigger sensation, more sex, more violence. Mm-hmm. And it's all part of a political scheme, a scientific scheme that has been worked out by some very intelligent people. Uh-huh. And it's it's been um, understood for a long time that what's going on in the world is not by chance. It's been well-planned, highly financed, and well-tuned. And at the top of the world in America, and the top of America's uh, power on the earth, we have people who are paid huge, large salaries to design games and design television shows, design, our entertainment and government. It's all, you know, even our presidents have speech writers. Uh Because in America, that's the way we do things. We hire people who are trained in universities how to manipulate sex, how to manipulate the human being, Mm -hmm. how to uh, frighten the human being, how to get that person, a person to do uh, what you want them to do by... Uh, by nefarious means. So we, we, you know, that's, we hold these people who do this kind of study, we hold them a high esteem today in America. We love the idea of manipulating using sex and violence and pornography and filth and alcohol and drugs to manipulate the whole human race. That's what America is all about. Mm-hmm. That's who we are. And so when you begin to see how all of this stuff is used, it's, it's really quite a subject that you need to get into. Sex, yeah. religion, and government. Mm-hmm. And your whole educational system is based on it. Uh-huh. And that's why we're in the mess we're in today. That's why we are who we are today, because we have never learned from history. And those who don't learn from history are bound to repeat it. And so America, like the Roman Empire, is under, it's on its way down. Absolutely. And That's there's nothing you're going to do to stop it. It's, yeah. uh, it's a karmic thing, and I think the Hindus are right when they, when they show that, uh, that history is karmic pulse. It's a karmic thing. You know, nations rise, nations fall. You know, uh, when you get married, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an upswing. You're feeling great, and later on, if it doesn't work out, then it's falling apart. Oh. Unless and until we educate educate ourselves uh, on how the world really works, there's going to be no hope for the human race. 
and I've said this on your show, I've said it before many times, I don't hold out much hope for the human family on the earth because the only real uh, hope that the human family could have is in spiritual and intellectual enlightenment. Absolutely. From, you know, enlightening the human mind to truth and justice and intelligence and wisdom and, and humanity, the, the, you know, the virtues of humanity. Well, all of that's gone around the world. That's, you know, and governments have made sure you don't have any sentimental thoughts about family or children or your or your grandparents, or anything of any spiritual nature. Yeah. Today, all humans are supposed to be nothing more than a computer blog, a computer blip on somebody's computer. So <clears throat> that's why in America, if you're looking for a job, you look, uh, you go to something not a job hunting agency. Mm-hmm. But in America, we call it um, a human resource. So if you're looking for a job, something to do, you go to the human resource uh, companies, and they because that's all you are is a resource. <clears throat> you're like iron and rubber and and uh, and you know building materials, and you you are a resource. Yeah. You are nothing more than a mechanical instrument on somebody's computer. You're a human resource. You know, there's they, a... re- they are able to manipulate, exploit and use your body's energy, they use your sexual energy, uh, you know, and I believe that people who are running the world today are not human. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. I think the people who run our governments and, and the world at the very top are not human. Mm-hmm. And by that mean, by that word, by those words I mean, I believe that very well could be extraterrestrials who look like humans. Uh-huh. But who are in fact not human, because that is keeping in that idea as as ludicrous as it may sound. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and let me restate it: I'm saying I think that the people who run the planet at the very top are not human. I believe that they could very well be extraterrestrials uh, who look like us. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and again, I would say, as ludicrous as that might sound to some. Uh-huh. Uh, you you only need to go to the 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 Bible, the Old Testament, Jewish Old Testament, uh, the New Testament, Christianity, and in Islam. All three uh, people of the book believe that there are angels or sons of God who look like humans who have come here to the earth. That's part of their religious belief, yeah. and I totally believe that mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that maybe we. And our frailties as humans are being used by extraterrestrials or some very powerful dark forces on the earth who are using our nature against us. Amazing. And keeping us occupied so we don't read, question, think, or do anything intelligent. All we do is watch television, go to fights and football games and and games of all kinds. And you know, it's very important to give the world sports. That's why you have the Olympics. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, because you have to have a lot of sports and a lot of alcohol and entertainment and drugs, because the idea is to keep the whole entire human race um, fighting each other, bloodshed, violence, mm-hmm. pornography. All of this is being orchestrated behind the scenes by our governments. Governments all around the world, I care not who they may be, all governments are in the business of controlling you, period. And they all work together behind the scenes. On the surface, they may be bitter enemies, but behind the scenes, I will guarantee you, there is no government on the earth that is an enemy of any other government. It's like the Crips and the Bloods. They're just different gangs. And the different gangs have marked off certain territories. Mm-hmm. And those certain territories belong to that gang, and they don't like it if you and your gang come over to their neighborhood. They don't care that you're another gang. They, they they respect that, and they will sit and drink with you as a gang members. They will sit and drink with you, and and be your friend. But as long as you don't do commerce and business, you don't come into their area and set up your business. And yeah. that's when that's when the war and bloodshed comes. So that's all that governments are. They're just gangs uh, that are fighting for their territory. Mm -hmm. And so your gang, wherever you live at, 
is uh, is is equally as bad as that my gang where I live at. So it's all gang wars. It's all gang wars, groups of humans, groups of men, who uh, have to show how brave and how um, you know how sexually potent they are mm-hmm. by wars and bloodshed. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. That's the name of the world we live in, and unless and until you've educated yourself on how the world works, you're never going to figure out what's going on on the planet. Um, I do, I do. I really believe that in this uh, particular issue lies almost a resolution for all man's problems in yeah, understanding this particular issue. I think you're probably right because uh, it is the bottom line on all men, for all men on the earth, the bottom line is sex. Mm-hmm. And that's a natural thing that was designed in us. Yeah. I think it's because with the intellect, man is one kind of creature, but with sex, he becomes an animal. He's just another reproducing creature. And so in order to make sure that men didn't get so occupied with their business and building and everything else and, and not procreate because they're only going to live so long and you've got to keep up the the, the, the system of reproduction mm-hmm. because if you don't the, the human race will die out and so whoever designed us put within us this uh, this insatiable desire for sexual release and so it's all it's all a very interesting and profound story about yeah. the human life on the earth how it affects us in government religion education and in our daily life but uh, you know, Wilhelm Reich was a very, very highly in tune with all of this subject. Yeah, absolutely. He was, he was a master on. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why uh, he died the way he did, mm. and uh, and all of his work is no longer able to be found anywhere because the powers that be did not want people knowing what he was telling people, what he yeah. was explaining to the world. The people who run this earth did not want to hear that. They don't want anybody knowing how they do what they do. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know, the problem is uh, uh, this all is uh, uh, works, uh, this all animates in a very symbolic level. It's not an, on, uh, on an intellectual level. That's why uh, uh, we can't intellectualize this out. We can't think this out. Uh, I was always fascinated by the way our frustrations and emotions uh, are represented in dreams, for example, when, you, uh, when we're asleep. Uh, yeah. They are represented in pure symbolism, and I al- always uh, uh, try to observe and to see how how they come. Because, for example, you might be frustrated about something intellectually, and in your dream, it's uh, it's represented in a way that's totally different. It's totally symbolic. But finding the link between this and that is a well, major. That's a whole. That's a whole field of study. You know how dreams are are produced by your emotions and by your life system. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I mean, that's I'm a trying, very interesting connection. Yeah, what I'm trying to say, Jordan, here is uh, I'm trying to find a connection between this and the way symbolism is used in the media and by politics uh, to indirectly instill the messages they want. So we're yeah. trying to think in a logical way, you know, left hemisphere way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. been programmed to think this way, but in reality, we, uh, in essence, we think in uh, with a more in, with an integ- integral way, in a symbolic yeah. way, and I believe that's how they are able to manipulate people without people even knowing it. The, because well, the word actually is there's a word for that. It's called projection. Uh-huh. To project. And so the word projection means someone has the ability, because of their technology and wisdom, they know how to project on you like a motion picture projector. Uh They project a picture on a screen at a movie house. They project a picture on a screen. Mm -hmm. We call it movies and motion pictures. But when people will project on you a system of thought, a system of belief, a religious belief or, or a political belief or some kind of a projection. That's what the word is, projection. So I would suggest that everyone hearing us keep in mind that people are all, all day long are projecting on you. They want you to think this way. They want you to understand this. They want you to understand that. Mm-hmm. They want you to dress this way. They want you to think this way. They want you to act and, uh, and do this, what they're doing. 
So they project on you. We're all going to the ball game tonight. You should come. Or we're all going to vote for this particular person. You should do the same. Mm -hmm. And so I learned a long time ago, I don't want anyone projecting on me what they think. I don't care what they think. I'll do my own thinking. Mm -hmm. So I'm not interested in people who project on me. Mm -hmm. So I would just uh, say to your audience, just make sure you watch people who are projecting things that you should believe. I'm very big on do your own research, do your own study, and do your own thinking. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to do any thinking, you need to look into Wilhelm Reich's work and, uh, and study this whole subject of how sex and government and religion all play a part in who you are and how you think today. Mm -hmm. Th that's the point of focus. That's the point of focus. Yeah. Um, because I've seen, uh, uh, even in, in personal experience, I've seen how uh, the discharging of emotions, the expression of emotions on that symbolic level, how it yeah. instantly liberates uh, the neurosis and the madness in us. I've, I've seen it uh, in animation. I've seen, I've seen how, how it works, and I've uh, uh, personally uh, experimented with it. Um, it's uh, absolutely I amazing. I, I've, I've seen it too. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing how, for example, yeah. you would be trying to resolve a problem for years and years and years, but the moment you are able to discharge the emotion, you are, the moment you are able to feel it completely, to, to yeah. let it rise to that uh, euphoric level, um, right? So that that's uh, actually tied to, an, to, uh, to a life force energy. It's a different form. It's, an, it's, a, it's a different topic and a very large topic. But yeah. the moment you are able to discharge that, the moment you are able to express that instantly, the neurosis is resolved, the madness is resolved. As if you're, someone uh, went into your subconscious structure and changed it. It's amazing how it animates and works. Well, I know, I know, I know. And that also, what you're talking about, also deals with a subject that I have been talking about for a long time, and that is how our body's energy is used uh, in commerce, that's a whole other subject, but how world business mm -hmm. uses your physical body as a, as a conduit for energy to run a business. Um, that's a whole other story mm -hmm. about um, your body as an electrical unit. And I got a whole thing I do, it takes about two hours, where I explain the human body in, in commerce, the human body as a business, and especially in America, the words and terms that we use here in business and commerce, it deals with the human body. And uh, the mere fact that water is a good conductor of electricity. Well, when you were born, you were wrapped in water. When your mother's water broke, you came out and were born. And so you came out of water. According to the law, it's called Maritime Admiralty Law. Yes. According to Maritime Admiralty or International, or another, way of, inter, uh, another way of saying Maritime Admiralty is International Banking. Mm -hmm. In International Banking Law, you are a Maritime Admiralty product because you came out of water. Mm -hmm. And your mother's water broke. You came down the birth canal. And so you become a product that can be bought and sold. And this is exactly how uh, money is created. Money is created based on your birth certificate in America. Your money, uh, American money is based on how, uh, you know, how old you are, when you were born, and where. And that's how our whole economic uh, uh, structure of commerce operates on the human uh, body. Our, our energy. Mm -hmm. It's an extraordinary story of how money works. Absolutely. Money works because of maritime admiralty banking law. And as I said, maritime banking law is the law of the high seas, of the law of water. Because the ancient Romans even said there were only two things on the earth, land and water. Mm -hmm. So there are, two, there are two kinds of law, the law of the land and the law of water. And the law of the land, of course, is just the law of the custom of the people who live on a particular piece of land. So it's called the law of the land. Mm -hmm. Well, the law of the land is different in every land. You can do things in Russia you can't do in America. Mm -hmm. You can do things in South Africa you can't do in China because of the law of the land. 
the land as the, where the people live. So you, you know, as in Rome, do what the Romans do. The idea is that the law of the land is the law of the custom of the people where you live. But there's a law, a greater law, that guides the whole earth. It's called the law of the sea, the law. And so the law of the sea is banking law. Because you can get a credit card in South Africa and go to a vacation in Russia. Well, wow. You can get a credit card in, uh, in the Middle East and go to America and, and, uh, and enjoy a vacation. Why? Because it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what, what land you're from. Money. Either you have it or you don't. Money. And so money is water. It's, re it's equated in banking circles as water. That's why you hear people say, well, boy, money goes through your hands like water. No, money is water. It is the cash flow, the liquid asset. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, money is, 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 uh, is water. It's liquid. It's a cash flow. Mm -hmm. And it's based on your body because your body is 90% water. Mm -hmm. It's a long story, but it's uh, the bottom line is that commerce, banking, religion, it's all based on some very fundamental concepts and ideas, and the one of the first, most important concept is sex. Mm -hmm. Second is water and money and commerce. Mm -hmm. Even the That's mythology. That's where we live in. Even the mythology, the Egyptian mythology, Sumerian mythology, it's all based on yeah. the same thing. It's all the same story. I know. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I would suggest people just go to my website, which is jordanmaxwell.com, and uh, go through the whole website. Don't mm -hmm. just look at the uh, home page, mm -hmm. but go through the whole website, and, and especially hit the button at the top that says uh, audio, video, and listen to the audio pieces. Not, not, they're not very long, but just little bits and pieces of important things I thought were important mm -hmm. for you to hear. It's on the audio video button, or another one was links. I'm surprised at how many people go to my website and never go to the links at all. They'll ask me questions, and on the links is uh, is the answers. Mm -hmm. uh, so go to my website, check out Jordan Maxwell, check out the links, mm -hmm. especially check out the research button because there's a lot of material there that people have never seen because they don't bother to do any research. Absolutely. If you go to go to my website, go through all of it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Absolutely. There's a lot of stuff on there you didn't know even existed. Absolutely. So anyway, uh, what a subject. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's it's an uh, it's a huge subject and uh, extremely important. I I hope everyone would see that. Well, I'm sure everybody pretty well knows that, but they don't know the the details. But I'm sure a lot of people know that sex runs the world. <clears throat> and that men have been running this planet and killing and murdering and plundering uh, from day one, from starting with the cavemen and the dinosaurs all the way up to today. We mm -hmm. still have our gladiators and the, and the cage fighting and martial arts and training up children all over the world. We train out little children from six or seven, eight years old. Mm -hmm. To uh, with, son, with, gore, uh, with with swords and guns, and uh, put them in uniforms, uh, you know, and teach them to kill their fellow man. Uh, it's it's ludicrous and it's crazy, but the human race is going to pay, and it's paying now, but it's going to pay later, even worse for what we have done to the human race. What we have done is we have trained up our children uh, to fight and to bloodshed violence and war and uh, one day it's going to suck the whole entire human family down the drain it's coming Rome fell the great Egyptian empire the Babylonians the Sumerians the Greek empire mm -hmm. the Austro-Hungarian I mean all the great empires and all the great dynasties they're gone mm -hmm. the same. Just, like Don, just like Gandhi said one day, they'll all be gone. They will have killed each other and raped and plundered until there was nothing left. And there's nothing of any decency or honorable good left in the world, especially in governments and religion. Mm -hmm. Government and religion are you know, the banes and the, the enemies of civilization. Government and religion. <clears throat> Absolutely. The way they are represented. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, you have to have government because 
without it is even worse. But the problem is that people who work for government are usually greedy and the people who want power. You very, very seldom ever get someone who is decent and good and honorable man to get into government. Because if you get a really good and decent, legitimately honest and decent person in the government, they will kill him. Mm -hmm. He will be assassinated. That's how or have a bad accident with his wheel, fall off his car and kill him and his family. Yeah. Good people cannot get into government in the world today, period. Well, and if they do, they're going to be killed very soon. Unfortunately, that's the truth. I mean, I'm not yeah. just telling you the truth. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Jordan, you know, this is uh, priceless and... Uh, the only thank you is by understanding and by going further and further into resolving these issues and um, educating ourselves about it. Well, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Just trying to awaken our fellow man and awaken the human race to the plight we're in. And I'm just suggesting that people turn inward, go inside of yourself, and and uh, don't listen to uh, don't listen to all the. Uh, propaganda of governments and religions and educational institutions and all these talking heads. Just go quietly into your bedroom and talk to the spirit world. Talk to God, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only place you're going to find wisdom and knowledge is within you. So it depends on what you want. But don't let people project on you anything. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I guess that I will go. Okay, uh, do you mind... Again. Do you mind if this was published exactly the way it is? Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to publish it the way it is. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Great. Okay, that's great. All right. Thank you always. Thank you.